So why this fast? It's about uh, truth, it's about environment, and it's about democracy. When Ladakh uh, became a union territory after being with Jammu and Kashmir for some 70 years, during which time also people in Ladakh always wanted to be an entity of their own because Ladakh has always been an independent kingdom in the Himalayas like Sikkim, like Bhutan, Tibet. Uh, so Ladakh was that, but due to some error in history, it became a part of the Kashmir and Jammu uh, kingdom. And when in 1947-48, India became a republic, Ladakh very happily wanted to be a part of this union, but not as a part of Kashmir. It wanted to be a part directly of India, and therefore appeals were made to the then uh, central government to accept Ladakh as a child of Mother India as directly uh, uh, UT or state, but that was unfortunately not heard, and Ladakh continued to be in Jammu and Kashmir. Which we there's nothing you know bad about Jammu and Kashmir, just that Ladakh is so different in the topography, environment. Uh, you know, this is like another planet compared to Jammu and Kashmir or any part of not just India, the whole world. It looks more like Mars than planet Earth even. And then culturally, linguistically, there's so much difference that these three could not be managed in one basket. So therefore, Ladakh was always demanding that. Then in 2019, uh, to all of our surprise, Ladakh was made into a union territory. And we were all so grateful that the ruling party was so concerned about Ladakh and it, they made it into a union territory. Now, there was always the expectation and in fact demand that it should be a union territory with legislative assembly, which means democratic representation of people in an assembly, which will then make laws and uh, policies to manage these fragile uh, ecosystems of this these mountains. That was one thing we always uh, had demanded. Another thing was about safeguards of this specially fragile uh, zone. And 370 provided that, but we were okay about 370 going because only that could allow Ladakh to be a separate entity. So therefore, we were happy with that also for Ladakh. I mean, it's different case for Kashmir and Jam. So uh, the safeguard part, Ladakh always expected that it was going to come from the six schedule because six schedule is tailor made for hilly regions with distinct indigenous tribal communities. Uh, normally, 57% or 50% tribal population is enough to qualify for that, but Ladakh has 97%. So we were hands down qualified for that. And we had no doubt the government that was so kind to make Ladakh a UT would also give that. It was a natural no brainer. And more than that, more than our expectation, the government itself assured us again and again that this uh, safeguard will be given to Ladakh. And they spoke in large uh, gatherings here, assuring Ladakh that we will uh, safeguard you under six schedule of the constitution. And then there were meetings of uh, Ministry of Tribal Affairs, NCST, the National Commission for Scheduled Tribes. They decided or recommended Ladakh to be included. These are in the minutes. And uh, law ministry and home ministry all were happy to do that. And not only that, they even kept it in the manifesto of the 2019 parliamentary elections. And 
not just that it was in the top 3 promises made in this election so people voted heavily and the bjp won its mp from ladakh so we were expecting that they would keep their promise but in months they went silent and then in some months they were upset even when we reminded them of this promise later they would actually uh, you know take police action on anybody uh, even uttering the word six schedule which is a provision of the indian constitution by the way not any foreign country now when the next election came in 2020 of the prestigious hill council of lay people said that we are going to boycott this election if this is how promises are treated so they decided to boycott the 2020 hill council elections and uh, then the central government sent a special state aeroplane to fetch the ladakhi leaders to delhi and then appeal to them to please let the elections happen. We'll solve everything after that. And, you know, our leaders, tribal indigenous people are very trusting. So they said, OK, if you assure that, we'll go back. And they came back. And again, the people of Ladakh voted them heavily. And they formed the government of the Ladakh Autonomous Hill Development Council. So two elections were won on this promise that they will safeguard Ladakh under six schedule. But then four years passed after 2020 and nothing happened. And in the last months, again, four or five meetings with the home ministry happened where they kept dilly-dallying, not taking decisions. Sometimes they asked for the demands to be written down and submitted. That would be one month. And then they would say the delegation is too large. Next time we'll make a smaller uh, committee, subcommittee, such things. And finally, on March 4th, 2024, just recently, they outright uh, denied uh, any possibility and said, we cannot give you a six schedule. And the other demand was, UT with legislature or statehood, rather statehood, if not UT with legislature, which is basic democracy that every citizen in India enjoys. So Ladakh right now has no democratic setup where they send re people's representatives to make decisions. We have just a lieutenant governor who comes for three, four years, who knows nothing about Ladakh, may not even have seen and to this very different climate, you know, like Mars, they are supposed to make every policy. And of course, they'll make mistakes. The best of them will make mistakes. The worst of them will sell it to whatever lobbies and businesses. So these, the consequences of these will be suffered by the local people. So this is why the sec second demand of Ladakhi people, or the first was, always democracy restoration, like they promised to Kashmir. Why not Ladakh? Now, in that meeting of 4th March, they said, we cannot do that also, and you can do whatever. So therefore, we Ladakhi people are very hurt, and we had this only resort to start a movement so that not only people in Ladakh, but all over the nation join us in support and uh, you know, support and defense of truth and justice, because it's a matter of truth also. It's not just about Ladakh. When somebody keep makes a promise, they must keep it. It's like giving a check which says six schedule, and then you take it and it bounces. That should not be acceptable. In fact, it should be punishable. So that's why we are on Anshan uh, today. And uh, yeah, today, today, actually, I'm on my eighth day and more and more people are joining me. On the first day, it was about 300 people who were for one day's anshan. 
and some 30 people who were on either three or five days. I'll try to show you. And then it became, then it became 500. We were surprised. Today it has become 1,000 people who have joined just for a one day anshan with us. So this is how it's growing and there is resentment among people. And uh, but we hope that this shows the central government about the seriousness of the matter in this very sensitive border area. Um, and I hope that it should not be left to just people in Ladakh, but people all over India should join this uh, struggle for truth, struggle for protection of fragile environment and struggle for democracy.